Hey friends, welcome back to the CNC Auto Channel. Friendly Neighborhood Mechanic here. Today we've got a 2014 Jeep Patriot in the shop and it's got wheel bearing noise on the front. So I've opted to go with wheel bearing replacements that are all in one. Wheel bearing inside of here, the knuckle and everything. And so I'm going to show you how to re replace this entire knuckle the quick and easy way all the tips, all the tricks from every video out there. You'll be amazed how easy this is. So the first step in replacing this wheel bearing is gonna be taking off the brakes. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the brake caliper uh, and uh, caliper bracket all in one. It's held on right back here. Go ahead and take a look back here. It's held on right here by two bolts. Those are 18 millimeter. So we'll just go ahead and buzz those out of here. That one. That one. All right. And let's hang this caliper up and out of the way. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get our rotor off. Now, a lot of times these rotors are going to be stuck on there pretty good. So I've already soaked it with some penetrant in the holes here around the studs and also around this mounting flange right there. But if it still won't come off, give it a few whacks right between the studs. And it'll loosen it up. Okay. All right. Next thing we want to take off is over here. Come on this side. And this is the outer tie rod in. Go ahead and turn this a little bit so you can see that. I'm going to take this nut off of here, and then that outer tie rod will come down. It's held on by this 18 millimeter nut right here. I'm going to loosen it up with the impact but it's probably going to start spinning and then we'll have to do the rest of the way with a wrench. Sure enough, it's just spinning now, but at least it broke free. Now we can come in here with our ratcheting wrench and see how it just wants to spin. So you got to hold this portion here. Now they say this is a nine millimeter, but it's not quite a nine millimeter, so I'm just going to use this adjustable wrench to hold it in place. We'll speed this up in post processing. And there she goes. Next thing we want to remove is our ABS sensor here. It's got a 10 millimeter bolt that holds it on. Go ahead and buzz that out. And then wiggle and remove. You can clean it off a little bit. It's a good idea to put a little grease on this when it goes back together. And we're going to put the bolt back in where it came from. Okay, now that the uh, ABS sensor is out, we're going to go ahead and remove it from the knuckle here. A little push pin holding it to the knuckle and try and get a screwdriver or trim tool underneath there and pry it out. A lot of times they're really brittle and it may not want to come out very easily, but we'll give it a try anyways. Here, yeah, sure enough, yeah, broke off. No big deal. It's no big deal. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the knuckle to strut bolts here. These are 21 mil. One, two, and then the bolts are not going to spin right now because they've got splines on the, this end that hold them in place. And also because of that, you're going to want to tap them out. So put the uh, put the bolt on there and 
give it a few whacks and come over here you'll see see how it's got the splines and hold it in place so you got to bust them out we'll go ahead and remove this nut put it on the other one and i'll show you we'll remove that one as well just make sure you don't pinch your abs wires let's get it safe and out of the way here somehow okay go all right next thing we need to get is this pinch bolt for the lower ball joint it's a 18 millimeter nut here go ahead and take that off and it too needs to uh, come out now this one you can either tap out or sometimes you can back them out with the with the uh, wrench like that kind of unscrew it Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take the nut off of the axle shaft. In order to get to it, we're going to have to get this cotter pin out of the way. So let's straighten this thing out. You can also cut these off if you want. I'm going to go ahead and straighten it out. Now that the cotter pin is coming out, you want to uh, take off this little uh, anti-back off sort of protector. There's probably a fancy name for that, but I don't know what it is. And there's a spring washer underneath of that. So take these things and set them aside. So now we have access to the nut that holds our axle to the knuckle. It's a 32 mil. Go ahead and buzz that off. <laughs> held on there pretty well so <clears throat> okay now that that nuts out of the way we want to make sure that our axle is moving so you can push in on it with your thumbs or tap on it with a soft hammer or something like that just to make sure that it's moving freely and will come out of the knuckle and so as long as you've got a little bit of motion it'll probably come free all right now that uh, the axle is free we're going to go ahead and remove the knuckle from the strut so you can take these bolts out that you've loosened up earlier and you can push the axle and set these down you can push the axle or pull the axle out of the knuckle like so and just sort of set it out of the way What we want to have access to now is this pinch area. This is the bottom of the knuckle is pinching onto this ball joint right here. And so we've got to spread this apart. And so we're going to twist this in this direction so that we have access to that. So we need to spread this part of the knuckle so that we can get it off of that ball joint. So get yourself a chisel or something that you can fit in there and spread that apart. All right, so now we got our wedge in there. You can just grab hold of the knuckle, work it. It's got a little rust in there. <clears throat> there it is. She's free. All right. Okay, so now we put it all back together. We're going to clean up some of these surfaces first, get the rust off of the ball joint, off of the splines of our axle here. Want everything to go back together nice and smooth easy notice i didn't have to take off our end link we've left our strut just hanging here we've left our caliper hanging here with the pads in it everything should go back together a lot faster a lot easier this way so hopefully you guys will appreciate the time savings here now we're ready to go back together with our new knuckle assembly with the wheel bearing installed on it so we'll go ahead and set it on top of the lower ball joint just goes into that pinch point just like so it should slide into place and it does we can go ahead and set our pinch bolt in place all 
and just like when we took it out it may need some persuasion to go back in and just screw it in place and with all suspension bolts you want to use a little bit of thread lock on it that way they never come back apart without you wanting them to okay we'll go ahead and tighten this up a little bit well it looks like i'm gonna have to hold the other side and we'll torque that here in a minute all right, we're going to go ahead and tighten, torque down this uh, ball joint pinch bolt. It is tightened to 60 foot pounds. There you go. So now we've got our lower ball joint connected. Go ahead and put the uh, Axle shaft in place, put a little grease on the splines there. Like so. Okay, this is being a little bit finicky, wasn't it? Okay. All right. Now we want to uh, hold, put the knuckle back into the strut, put it in there, push a bolt in to hold it in place. That one, put a little Loctite on these as well all right so notice these splines here we need to have these back inside and holding themselves so they don't spin while we try to tighten up the nut so in order to do that all you gotta do is hit it with a hammer here to get it to go back into its home okay so now we can bring these tighten these up 21 millimeter and they won't spin but if they do you can just hold the back with a 21 millimeter wrench okay so now we can torque the knuckle to strut bolts these get torqued to 80 foot pounds Time to put our retainer back on the axle shaft here. So we'll go ahead and put the washer down first, and then the retaining nut goes on next. And that's a 32 mil. This bolt gets to torqued to 180 foot pounds. We've got this torque to spec. We set our retaining. Oh, almost forgot. We got to put our spring washer on first and then we can put this uh, retainer in place and the cotter pin to hold it just like so there we go and we're going to bend the cotter pin so that it won't come out we put our abs sensor back in place so it just slides into its little hole there and is retained with that 10 millimeter bolt that we took out of the old knuckle Always get them started by hand so we don't cross thread them. And then we can bring it home with the tools. Done. Now we can put our tie rod end back in place. So we'll go ahead and aim that up through the knuckle. There it goes. And get our retaining nut. Get it started. And we'll see how far we can get with our ratcheting wrench before it starts turning the whole assembly. Yeah. So 
So what do we do? We just put the uh, adjustable wrench on top to hold it in place. Wow. Tighten it down. If you move both wrenches at the same time, it actually goes faster. Twice as fast. Okay, there we go. This gets tightened to 40 foot pounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our brake rotor back in place. Set it up there. And I'm going to go ahead and just hold it in place with one of these lug nuts. That'll keep it from flopping around while you try to put the caliper back on. There we go. Okay, so now we can put our caliper back in place. And as I showed before, I didn't even take the pads out of here. So we're going to see if we can't just slide it back onto the rotor like so. Yep, good. And get our bolts. Yep, I've got Loctite on my bolts for the caliper bracket. I'm started by hand. And this upper one. Like so. There we go. Okay, now that those are started, we can take them home with our 18 millimeter impact. You ready? Okay. All right. And the caliper bolts get torqued. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. The caliper bolts get torqued to 80 foot pounds. Good. So there you have it. Just like I said, it was super easy to replace the whole knuckle assembly, including the wheel bearing on this 2014 Jeep Patriot. We were able to do that without taking the uh, stabilizer end links loose without undoing the brakes. Just take it out, put it out of the way. You can do all of this on the car with normal hand tools. Really a quick and easy job, as you saw, is probably 15, 20 minutes in between all the extra time of us filming. But, uh, you know, I really like uh, undoing the uh, knuckle to strut first and pulling it forward. And that allows you to rotate this so that you can get to that lower ball joint pinch point a whole lot easier. So hope this saved you a whole bunch of time today. Hope I really appreciate you guys tuning in. If I missed something, if you want to see something else, please comment down below, uh, like, subscribe. Mrs. C behind the camera and I, we really appreciate you guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless.